Hi everybody, I'm Mark Pensestadler from zenithowner.com. Today's video is going to be on routing fuel lines through your fuselage. If you're at this point in the game, I guess the first thing you want to think about is what kind of fuel lines do you want to use. You can use rubber hose, aluminum lines, or a one-piece braided steel line like I used. If you use rubber hose, just be aware that at some point in the future you will have to change those hoses. You can make aluminum lines. Uh, they are pretty tough to do. I tried that and gave up. There's a lot of bends you have to make and it can't be one piece. You have to have a minimum of two, maybe three pieces to get from the fuel selector all the way up to the wing. I went the easy route and I ordered one piece braided steel fuel lines from aircraftspecialty.com. These lines are fantastic. They're super high quality and I highly recommend you check out aircraftspecialty.com if you want to get braided steel fuel lines, either for your fuselage or up in your engine compartment. So I'm going to take you through how I routed mine and hopefully you'll get some ideas and come up with a great system for yourself. All right, builders, I know this looks like kind of a mess right now, but let me explain where I'm at with this. These are my braided steel fuel lines I purchased from Aircraft Specialty. These lines are very, very nice. They're one piece lines that go all the way from the fuel selector valve through the center console, under the baggage floor, and then they'll go up into where the wing uh, mounts to the fuselage. One of the things I want to mention is, as you're building your airplane, try to think about 10 or 20 steps ahead of where you're at now. And what I mean is, if you look at the inside of my fuselage, none of the interior pieces are riveted. And it was kind of hard to do when I was building because I wanted to rivet them because it makes it look like, you know, you're further along. It's kind of the fun part is riveting. But I knew at some point I'd have to run brake lines down through the bottom of the fuselage. I'd have to route them through the center. I'd have to route fuel lines. I still have flat motor wires and antenna cables and a beacon uh, wires. Everything has to come up here and get routed up here. If all these parts were riveted and installed, they'd be just very, very hard to get access to. Here's one perfect example. I wanted to keep the brake lines low on the bottom of the fuselage so they don't interfere with a torque tube. So I have them clamped uh, down here with one bolt. I'll show you the, it's a flush mounted bolt on the outside of the airplane. But if the torque tube and, you know, the side plates and everything were already installed, I, I would really wouldn't even have access to be able to do that. So with being able to open all this up, same with this hole here, I needed access to get in there to open up that, that slot. So just kind of think ahead, don't rivet parts until you're absolutely sure that you can final rivet them. I'll show you what this looks like on the bottom of the airplane. So here's that screw on the bottom of the airplane. I used a flush mounted screw for two reasons. One, it just looks better. And two, obviously I'll pick up about 25 miles an hour in cruise speed, not having a bolt head protrude on the bottom. All right, so let me explain all this mess to you. I have four lines coming from my fuel selector valve. This is a, a UL Power 350 IS engine, so there's a it's fuel injected, so I have two fuel lines from the tank and two lines to the tank. Three of them come down and go through this center slot, through the, the center console, and I couldn't fit four. So this fourth line, it, it comes down from the fuel selector valve. It's going to go in between, under the center console, and right about here where my finger is, it's going to come out of the center console and then just go back into here, where it gets routed under the baggage seat, and then kind of the same way everything else is, under the baggage floor and on up. Now these three, I was actually able to mount these much neater than I thought I could. What I did was I took an Adele clamp, and I did this twice, and I put it in a vise and smashed it down, so instead of being round, it's a big oval, which holds those fuel lines tight against the side, and I put my antenna cable through there too. I didn't take a video of how I smashed that down. There's nothing, nothing tricky about it, but if you want to see pictures of how I did it, go to my builder's log, which will be, uh, I think, 31 January of 2017, 
and you'll see a few pictures on there. Even though I'm making these videos, I still do maintain my, my online builder's log. This gray cable right here is the elevator trim electrical cable. And as you can see, I didn't have to clamp it. I just kind of twisted it around this brake line and that holds it secure and it holds it to the bottom of the floor out of the way of the control stick and then through a grommet up through the center console and then it'll go up to the, the um, trim switch. So that's it. With those fuel lines installed, I don't know if you can actually tell because it does look kind of a mess, but the center, the center is wide open. Nothing should interfere with a torque tube. And what I'm going to do now is install all those parts back. And I think now I can rivet them, but I'll at least click them together for now and see where I'm at. Obviously the control stick isn't in, but you can see how everything is secured to the side and bottom. Nothing should interfere with that control stick. Of course, back here we'll need tidied up just a little bit once I kind of work my way back there. So everything looks good so far. On this bolt here, because this is on the outside above the seat, I used a rounded head bolt just so it's smoother and doesn't have any jagged edges if somebody puts their fingers down there or something. Here we have the control stick installed. And if you can see in there, I just want to show you that nothing interferes. It's all free and clear. All the fuel lines are out of the way. You get full range of motion on the stick without it hitting anything. Now, as I kind of put up on the screen a minute ago, as it turns out, I think I actually could have fit four fuel lines in here and this, this wouldn't have hit. When I was planning it, I thought the bottom would hit if I had four in there, but it looks like there's actually plenty of room. So if you haven't routed yours yet, you can actually fit all four through that side. I think for me, it might be too late because this fuel line is already cut. Um, it was measured for this routing. So I think what I'll do is I, I'm gonna just kind of place it up here and see if it does fit on that side. If it does fit, if I have enough length, then I think I'm gonna move it so it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it protruding out here. So we'll see if it works or not. But one of the other things I wanted to show you while we're up in this area, I made my top piece out of carbon fiber. And you probably believed me. This is just the metal piece here wrapped in the carbon fiber looking vinyl graphic material. It's pretty cheap, easy to do. And I'm actually inside the cockpit here. This top piece, this piece, the top piece for the center console here and in the instrument panel will all be wrapped with that black carbon fiber. So it'll look, look pretty nice and the rest of the interior will be painted gray like the front here. Okay, final clip on this video. I couldn't leave well enough alone, so I did route that fourth line in here. So now I have, maybe you can see it this way better, I have all four lines coming from the fuel selector, going down the pilot side of the center, and then off to the back where two of them split to that way, two of them split this way. So it is nice. I won't have to cut a slot in this side piece here. Unfortunately, I already drilled a hole right here, so I'll have to find a creative way to cover that up. Maybe some sort of data plate or something like that. I can rivet over there. So, But I do like that all four lines are running down the center now. It's a real nice, neat installation. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope, uh, I hope you got something from it. If you haven't run your fuel lines yet, uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight on what you need to think about or how you might want to run them. So that's it. I've been in the hangar all day. I'm done. All right, because I just did this, I'm going to include one more clip with this video. These are how the lines are secured in the back of the fuselage. I have these little standoffs here, one on each side. And you can see they just go from here up into this channel and then they're going to come out right up here and go into some elbows that will go into the wing.
So that is the complete routing. All the way from the fuel selector valve, through the center, they split off. Two go this way and up, and two go that way and up. So there it is, there's the fuel line routing. One final thing I'll mention is, obviously there's a baggage floor that goes here, and I did decide to put a um, an opening or an access area right here. These are from the wing. I'm gonna order two more from Zenith. I'm gonna put one here, and obviously one on the other side. And that'll always in the future, that'll give me access to this if I need to change a fuel line or whatever. And also, if I need to change a brake line, I'll be able to reach this here. So, I decided that I'm gonna have one access plate on each side of the fuselage baggage bottom.